Hey everyone, it's Chris, K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. And today's video is uh, an unscientific test. I've seen a lot of videos online where people put a Baofeng UV5R into a spectrum analyzer and they're showing just how many harmonics are being generated by the radio when you transmit. So here's my Baofeng UV5R, I've got my little Kenwood microphone on it. And I'm going to do a really unscientific test today. I'm going to look at it with a spectrum analyzer and I'm also going to do a test where I'm going to walk away from a receiver listening to a harmonic and just see what happens when we're about 200 feet away. So that's today's test, very unscientific. It's really more of like a, a hands-on, nuts and bolts sort of real life, real world sort of uh, test. So let's see what happens. So here's my UV5R. I've got it set to 146.52. Uh, it's low power, I don't think I'm going to interfere with anybody nearby. What you see just over here is my ICOM, an old ICOM AHT, a T7A. I've got that tuned to the harmonic that would be in the UHF band. So, on the spectrum analyzer, the green marker is, I guess, the first harmonic, and that would be the second, or we talked this the second harmonic. Th you know, the guys have crossed that term around left and right. The primary, the fundamental will be here. This will be the first harmonic, I'm going to call it, and this will be the second harmonic. Let's just go with that. <laughs> here we go. We're going to keep the mic. I've got the attenuation turned on on the analyzer. Um, again, this is very unscientific. So here we go. I'm going to key it up. And we're going to see, is you'll, there's a primary, there's the second harmonic, and then you see that the third harmonic did, it did show up there. See it? The second harmonic, whatever it is. What you're listening to, that is the T7. Now, mind you, it's a foot away, so of course we're going to hear something there, right? So we'll do it again. Now, we're seeing about, it's about minus 30 dB on the scale, and then the first harmonic is sitting there at about minus... So it really is about a 40 dB difference. I don't believe that's the spec, the FCC specification. So, all right. Now what I'm going to do now is go outside, and I'm going to just key the mic and talk into it. I'll be about 150 feet, 200 feet away from the HT, and we'll see what the HT hears. So there you have it. I went outside, I walked, um, I guess it was about, it was as far as I wanted, about 125 feet away from the, uh, the ICOM T7A serving as a receiver. Uh, I was outside, so the, re the radio's inside on a rubber duct, the UV5R is on a rubber duct, so of course we're not talking ideal conditions. However, you did hear, you did hear that harmonic up there in a UHF frequency. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Um, what it tells me is that if you're using a UV5R, say like um, a, a races or an Aries event where you're working a parade or you're working a marathon or something like that, and you're near local police and EMS workers, there's a possibility you could interfere with them. Some of their frequencies are in the 800 megahertz range. Some of them are UHF, depends on your locality. Um, so they could potentially interfere with emergency communications. So... Um, I, I would have to say, you know, that, that I would not use my UV5R on a regular basis. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I, it sits in my truck, really, as, like a, as a, uh, an emergency SHTF kind of radio. Um, that's really all it's there for. Um, but I don't think I would use it if I was working um, at some sort of a volunteer event where we're helping out a public service event. I don't think I would use it for that. So there you go. This is an unscientific test, but it also had a little bit of real world this is what happens when you use these kinds of radios uh, results. So I, I hope this helped. Um, you know, it, 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 we all get uh, attracted to, to low prices, right? So, you know, the UV5R, let's face it, it it's a $40, $35 radio, right? It, it's, it's disposable. If it breaks, you throw it out and get another one. We've all, we all think that. And, and I think for, hey, look, certain applications, maybe for off-roading and you're in the middle of nowhere and, and um, you know, you got a bunch of hams together, you're up on a, doing a soda activation or something and you want to, you know, communicate with each other, maybe it's okay for that. But I would think maybe those elevations, <laughs> who knows what it might do. Um, they may have its, its uses, but I, I think this should serve as kind of like a heads up uh, that, that, that these radios are, that you're getting what you're paying for in these things, right? They're 30 bucks. <laughs> That's what that we're getting more paying for on them. So um, anyway, I just wanted to do this video and to do a quick real world demonstration of what happens with that sort of interference. So if this helped you at all in any way, you know, first of all, before you even do that, 
comment below. Let me know what you think. I mean, a lot of folks are going to say, you know what, the UV5R got a lot of new hams into the hobby, and you're right, it did, and that's great. Um, so we're all going to, we're, we're all, I know those comments are out there, and feel free to put them in there. Um, but also, let's just talk about like, like what the potential interference problems could be. Um, anyway, if you liked what you saw here, uh, subscribe below, hit the like button. Um, but the subscription would really help. It really kind of encourages me to do more, more of these, uh, these videos. So until next time, 73 from K2CJB.